All right, so dementia and neurodegenerative disorders. So let me be clear that neurodegenerative disorders often present with dementia, which I would like to define as dementia is a decrease in cognitive ability, memory, or other mental functions. Um, and this, these, uh, these symptoms are based on degeneration of the cerebral cortex. So neuro neurodegenerative disorders can have uh, degeneration in the cerebral cortex where the brain cells stop working there, but also in the deeper structures of the, of the brain, including um, the basal ganglia leading to movement problems. Um, so there's a lot of different types of de neurodegenerative disorders. Uh, there's Alzheimer's, vascular dementia, frontotemporal dementia, Parkinson's disease, Lewy body dementia, Huntington's disease, Creutzfeldt, Jacob disease. These are the main neurodegenerative disorders. Uh, there's also a couple of mimics that can also present with um, basically symptoms of dementia. Uh, there's depression, uh, there's Wernicke, Korsakov, and normal pressure hydrocephalus. These three I'm going to talk about in other sections, um, but you can keep an eye out for them. So okay, let's let's focus in on Alzheimer's now. Alzheimer's is basically the degeneration of the cerebral cortex. Um, you see amyloid precursor protein, APP. It's cleaved into amyloid, which is deposited in gray matter, and that can just worsen um, the degeneration of your brain cells in the cerebral cortex. There's a couple of risk factors. Um, age, as you age, your cells degenerate more. Um, apolipoprotein E4 increases your risk of Alzheimer's. E2 decreases the risk, so it's easy to remember. 4 is greater than 2. Then you can have mutations in the APP or presenilin genes. Um, Presenilin, you have to memorize, but if you remember Alzheimer's pathophysiology, then you know that obviously APP mutations can increase the risk, um, give you earlier onset. Down syndrome is also, um, Down syndrome patients are also at risk of early onset Alzheimer's. And the reason for this is because APP is on um, chromosome 21, and Down syndrome patients have an extra chromosome 21, so they have more APP, more amyloid, more uh, deposition into the brain. So the presentation of Alzheimer's disease should be pretty easy to understand because you I'm sure you've heard about it, you, so you know somebody with it maybe. Um, but patients start with slow onset memory loss. And, they have lo and then it progresses to loss of learned motor skills and language. And finally, you end up with changes in behavior and personality. And note that this is all just a gradual stepwise decline, not stepwise, gradual decline in um, cognitive ability over time. Okay. Uh, this is the most common cause of dementia, and patients often unaware and unconcerned about their cognitive changes. On histology and imaging, you see there's a cerebral atrophy and it's widespread cortex atrophy. So you'll get narrow gyri and widened sulci. I would suggest you just Google that and see how that looks like. Um, also on histology, importantly, are neuritic plaques, and these are made, of, made out of arm amyloid. If you remember amyloid, these are co these are stained Congo red, there's apple green birefringence. Uh, also, there are neurofibrillary tangles right here. So kind of like spermy looking things. These are neuro neurofibrillary tangles. These are um, hyperphosphorylated phosphorylated tau protein. These are microtubule associated proteins. You can kind of it's kind of stringy microtubule um, tangles. Um, these are neurofibrillary tangles. So remember those two. Neurofibrillary tangles, neuro neuritic plaques made out of amyloid. Uh, so I mentioned that these patients um, present with memory loss first. The thing is that you'll get quest, um, tested on this a lot is that normal aging also presents patients can experience memory loss. So the question is how, what is normal aging and what is Alzheimer's disease? And so the differences in severity is that Alzheimer's is much more severe and these patients, patients lose their ability to perform activities of daily living. Okay. In normal aging patients, then they have some memory loss uh, Memory is not as great as before, but their activities of daily living are preserved. And the second thing about is awareness. Alzheimer's patients are unaware and unconcerned about their cognitive decline. They think nothing's wrong. They don't want to go to the doctor. Someone has to bring them to go to the doctor. Normal aging, these patients are actually concerned. They're like worried about their um, the memory changes, but it's not as severe actually. Uh, but they're just more aware of, of the changes that's happening. So next is vascular dementia. And this is caused by brain damage resulting from um, multiple episodes of strokes. Um, so um, Alzheimer's, we said, presents, it's a gradual decline over time, slow. This one is due to multiple strokes. So you can kind of um, almost 
uh, it's really easy to understand that there's a stepwise progression of cognitive decline. What it is, what it, so this patient's doing good, pa patient's doing good, good, good cognitive function. They get a stroke, cognitive decline, okay. And then, then they stable out, okay, they stable out, they're doing okay again. I mean, obviously, not as great as before, but they're doing okay. And then um, another hit, they get another stroke. It's another step down the ladder of their cognitive abilities. Maybe their memory got even worse. Maybe they got, they lost their motor function now, and then they're sta stable for a little bit, and it happens again. They get another stroke, uh, another step, okay? So this is vascular dementia. And with these patients, you obviously see many risk factors for strokes. So hypertension, smoking, atrial fibrillation, etc. We'll talk about more about strokes later. On imaging, then it would make sense then that you would see multiple strokes on imaging. I've, um, let me clear this image first, clear my marking. You can see with these arrows that there's multiple uh, lesions here, all these white matter, all these white lesions, uh, all multiple strokes that can cause this um, stepwise dementia. So the next one is frontal temporal dementia. The name just makes it so simple. It's the generation of the frontal and the temporal cortex. Now, if you can remember the functions of this frontal and the temporal cortex, you pretty much know this whole disease. Do you remember what the frontal cortex was responsible for? So frontal cortex is for um, concentration, behavior, personality, things like that. So if you get degeneration there, you're going to get changes there. And then the temporal cortex, what was, the, what was that key area that we kept talking about in the temporal cortex? Uh, what was the, the Wernicke's area? And then there's um, basically the temporal cortex is involved in language. So what you're going to see is you're going to get changes in behavior and personality if you get hit more in the frontal cortex, and you get um, aphasia if you, get, if you have um, degeneration in the temporal cortex. This later eventually does progress to dementia, which is the memory loss, the decreased cognitive ability. And then on histology, what you're going to see is round aggregates of tau protein. These are called PIC bodies, which is why there's another, another name for this disease is PIC disease. Um, so these aggregates of protein, kind of here round, roundish. Okay, remember that tau protein was also seen in Alzheimer's disease. Um, it was in the neurofibrillary tangles. Those were the hyperphosphorylated um, tau protein. Here it's just more round aggregates. So it's round here and it's more tangles in Alzheimer's. All right, so the next one is Parkinson's. This is another big one I'm sure you all know about. And this is a degenerative loss of dopamine release neurons in the substantia nigra of the basal ganglia. Remember what we said, what was the function of dopamine in the basal ganglia? What does it do to the, how does it affect our movement? Remember that it, it, uh, it promotes the direct pathway and it blocks the indirect pathway. So you're actually um, promoting the movement both ways. So if you lose these, um, this dopamine, uh, you're going to get decreased movement and that's how you're going to present. And there's a really nice mnemonic for this. It's called traps. Okay, so it's, let's see, decrease. Traps stand for tremor. This is a resting tremor. Okay, this is the pill rolling tremor. This is just their hands just moving back and forth, back and forth, like they're rolling a pill in their fingers. Uh, it just disappears with movement. So it's a resting tremor. That's a key. Uh, the other thing is they have rigidity. Remember, I said they have decreased movement. So this rigidity of their extremities. And this is a cogwheel rigidity. Um, you'll see a video of this later. But when you move them, there's a resistance and then they move a little bit like a cogwheel. And they, they stop, and you move in a little, little bit and stop. The next one is akinesia or bradykinesia. Basically this is fancy words for slowing a movement. So maybe they're, whatever, everything they do is slow, like they're in slow motion, they're moving in water. Um, the next one is postural instability. You push them, they fall down like nothing super imbalanced. Finally, they have a little shuffling, shuffling gait when they're moving, so that's traps. That's everything you need to know about their symptoms. So I want to point out that motor symptoms come first, and then the dementia does not occur until many years later. So maybe like 20 years later, finally they lose their cognitive ability. So they lose their memory, they lose their um, uh, personality changes, but that's all way later. And we're going to come to this one next, Louis Bonvati dementia, which is very similar to Parkinson's. Um, and but that one has um, motor and cognitive changes very um, in short succession. So in histology, um, 
we see round eosinophilic inclusion, so like that reddish inclusions of alpha synuclein. Okay, so this is called a Lewy body. It's in the neurons, as I've shown in the pictures. Kind of reddish, kind of round. Um, these are Lewy bodies. And then you'll also see in the substantia nigra, let me go backwards, there's loss of pigmented neurons in the substantia nigra. And where substantia nigra is where the neurons that are producing the dopamine. So this is normal. You see there's lots of nice pigmented neurons, but this one is very pale, okay? Um, because there's loss of all those neurons making dopamine, so it all makes sense. All right, so the next one is called Lewy body dementia. This is due to degeneration of the cerebral cortex, but this presents very, very similarly to Parkinson's. It's called a Parkinson's plus syndrome. So you get all those Parkinson's syndromes, um, so that's trap, okay? That's the traps. Do you remember what those stand for? Remember it's, it's a tremor, rigidity, akinesia, which is slowed movement, postural instability, and shuffling gait. Okay, then you get dementia, and you get this characteristic, hallucinations, okay? Hallucinations, very easy. And then REM sleep behavior disorder. Basically, these patients dream, and they, like, act out their dreams. They're, like, um, these are very vivid, intense, and violent dreams, and they're acting it out. Um, so, the histology, again, you see the Lewy bodies, which is why we have the name. These are the round eosinophilic inclusions. And then, um, I just want to point out here, like I just mentioned before, that the motor symptoms, and then these occur very closely in time, okay? So, I think it's within one year. You don't have to memorize that, but just know that they occur very closely in time. You get motor symptoms and then cognitive changes very closely in time, and that helps you tell it's Lewy body dementia and not Parkinson's disease. All right, so Huntington's disease, another cause of dementia. This is a, it's due to trinucleotide repeat expansion of CAG in the Huntington gene, okay? And that will lead to uh, atrophy of the caudate and the putamen. Remember, those are parts of the basal ganglia, okay? There's a caudate and there's the putamen. Um, and this is characterized by changes in neurotransmitter levels. There's decreased a uh, acetylcholine and decreased GABA, and there's increased dopamine. So the super easy mnemonic for this is CAG, which is the trinucleotide re uh, repeat. Tells you everything. CAG caudate loses ACH and GABA. Tells you everything. It tells you it's in the caudate. Tells you you have decreased acetylcholine and decreased GABA. All right. So the way this presents is going to be um, it's very characteristic. It's going to be a young person. Usually remember that dementia is in older patients, but this is a young person, okay? They're going to have dementia, and then they're going to have involuntary movements because the basal, basal ganglia got hit. So they're going to have choreo, which is um, kind of it's like a dancing movement. We'll show you some videos later. Atitosis, which is like the, I think it's a snake-like writhing movement. And then you also have behavioral changes. Patients can get become very aggressive or they become depressed, okay? So this is all very characteristic syndrome with dementia in a young patient, also with these um, with involuntary movements and behavioral changes. Um, the other key is that, remember, it's an autosomal dominant disease, so um, oftentimes they have a, there's a family member with similar symptoms, um, or it's like they say a family member that died, um, died of, for unexpected reasons, something like that. It's autosomal dominant. All right, finally is Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. This was nasty. So it's a nasty disease, the prion disease, where your prions become abnormally folded. They go to the beta conformation. So this abnormally folded protein is not degradable, so it just stays there forever. And even worse is it converts sur surrounding proteins into a pathologic, so it's like it just infects everything else. It just messes up your whole brain. Um, so then this, this abnormally folded prions will then damage neurons and you get intracellular vacuoles. All these vacuoles lead to something called spongy deterioration, um, which I've shown here in this picture. So you got all these vacuoles, all these circular holy things. Basically like in a sponge, you got a bunch of holes, so spongiform deterioration. So the presentation here is it's rapidly progressing. Remember, it's just super nasty disease, so the dementia here progresses very rapidly. Alzheimer's is slow, remember, it's a, years, it's a slowly progressing, it takes years to happen. Um, the other key is the myoclonus. They have these sudden movements, they're sudden jerks, that's myoclonus, okay? Uh, ataxia is not as important. Myoclonus is the key here with rapidly progressing dementia. 
And there's a couple of other key characteristics. There's the EEG, which is uh, where they stick electrodes to your head to measure your brain waves, and you get periodic sharp waves. And then if you take their CSF fluid, you're going to get some 14-3-3 protein. Okay, so again, there's spongiform cortex and histology, which I mentioned. So we've covered all the neurodegenerative diseases. You can stop here, go to the next video. Otherwise, I'm going to review all of the degenerative uh, diseases again. I'm going to point out the most salient, the most important points. If you remember this chart that I'm going to show you, which is a uh, condensed version of everything, you're probably going to answer, I'd say, 80% of all the questions that you need, maybe 80 or 90%. It really does have all the key features of each de um, degenerative disease. So Alzheimer's, what were the key features here? Well, the key features is deterioration rate, it's gradual rate, and the other key features are histology. What were the histological features? Those neuritic plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. Okay, neuritic plaques are the amyloid. So they might just ask you on histology what it's going to do, and it's gonna, your answer is it's going to either um, it's going to have that Congo red staining, or it's going to have apple green birefringence. Next up is vascular dementia. What was the key um, timeline for this? The key timeline here is that it's a stepwise deterioration in mental function as opposed to gradual in Alzheimer's. Um, normal aging, I'm just, I just talked about, but it's, you get some memory loss, but you can still take care of yourself, and patients are concerned about their changes. Now, frontotemporal dementia, how does this first present? Remember, it's frontotemporal, so it's super easy. So you get changes in behavior and personality, or you get aphasia, which is temporal cortex, and then dementia follows after that. And what was the key histological feature here? Easy, it was the pick bodies. Okay, Parkinson's disease, how does this present? What's, this, what's the mnemonic we had? Remember, it's TRAPS, and what does that stand for? TRAPS is the resting tremor, it's the rigid rigidity of the body, akinesia, postural instability, and shuffling gait. And then the dementia follows much later after the motor symptoms. Histology, you see Lewy bodies. And then how do we differentiate this from Lewy body dementia? Remember that Lewy body dementia has a similar to Parkinson plus syndrome. So you also have this trap symptoms. But the difference is that you can have hallucinations and you can have dementia. That uh, well, The dementia occurs closely with the motor symptoms. Um, again, you also see Lewy bodies in histology. Next is Huntington's disease. How, what kind of patient is this? How does this patient present? Remember the key feature is the age. The age is a younger patient, 20 to 50 years old. They, um, they have dementia, but they also have involuntary body movements and behavioral changes. They're either very aggressive or they become depressed. Um, they have similar um, family member with similar symptoms or a patient um, family who died early. And then finally, we have creutzfeldt jakob disease. How does this present? This is, um, remember this is the super nasty one. So you can have rapidly progressing dementia. This is weeks to months as opposed to years. And then the patient will also have myoclonus where they're just like, their arms are shooting around. They can't control themselves. And then on, you can also see the 1433 protein and then it's spongiform. Whenever you see something spongiform on histology, you know it's going to be creutzfeldt jakob disease. I'm going to talk a little bit about, about, about the mimics just for completeness of this chart. There's depression, which is Siggy cap symptoms. You can see the psych chapter for that. And then Wernicke Korsakov, we'll talk about, I think we just talked about that already. Do you remember the, the, the triad of symptoms? The triad is that it's uh, confusion, ataxia, and nystagmus. So I, I realize there's actually four things. So these patients also can have memory loss. But it's confusion, ataxia, memory loss, and nystagmus. Remember, it's basically, it looks like a drunk dude with eye problems. That was the thing. It's an alco alcoholic or a homeless patient. Finally, normal pressure hydrocephalus, we'll talk about in a sec but the presentation is wet, wobbly, wacky. So that's urinary incontinence, ataxia, and dementia. It's usually an older patient. So that's it for our neurodegenerative diseases.